I've always wondered, what did you see? What did you see, Isaiah? What did you see when you were writing Isaiah 43? What did God show you? Did he show you all the trials and tribulations of life that every child of God will have to go through? I want us to focus on his choice of words in verse 2. When you pass through the waters, when you walk through the fire. He didn't say if, he said when. That means at one point or another in our lives, we will have to go through the waters and fires. In other words, at one point or another in our life, we will have to go through difficult times. Isaiah said it himself, the fire will come, the water will come. But thank God that's not all he said. He said God is with you. He is with you in every situation, every scary moment, every weak moment, every tear, every pain, and every hardship. God is with you. Every time when you have your back against the wall, God is with you. As we go through life, it is easy to become distracted with what is happening around and to us. Sometimes it seems as if life is working against us in every way possible. I want to encourage you that these circumstances will not break us if we keep our eyes on God. Let us look at the benefits of fixing our eyes on God. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. This is a great assurance, although we may not see it like that. It would be better if it said, I will not allow you to go through the waters. I will not allow you to go through the rivers, or I will not allow you to go through the fire. Those are more welcomed promises, but that isn't the assurance we have. We live in a world where adversities can set in at any time. So much is happening on a day to day. If we turn on the news, we can just see it. There really seems to be no safe haven. For a lot of people, there seems to be nowhere to run and get peace and peace of mind. We all have personal things with which we must contend. So much is happening in our lives that we must do everything to keep our focus on God and who he is. Even amid our heartbreaks, we must not allow them to preoccupy our thoughts and distract us from God. Maybe you went to the doctor and the report was not favorable. Or is it that the bank has been calling you and your home is about to be foreclosed? Everyone has to go through the waters and fires of life at one point or another. Whatever it is, I tell you that God knows what he is doing, and you do not need to shift your focus from him. God is faithful. As it is in the passage from Isaiah, we must trust God that whatever comes our way is not surprising.
him. We can trust that God knows what we are going to face long before we are going through it. He knows the end from the beginning, and if he allowed us to go through it, he has a reason for it. The Bible tells us that all things work together for the good of them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28 When God says all, he means all. When God says all, he means all. He is in control. Nothing is outside of his control. Even the things that seem insurmountable right now are working together for our best benefit. Just do not lose hope. As God's children, we are called to live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 7. Our faith must remain steadfast as we go through tribulations. As we were filled with joy and jubilation when things were on the up, we must also cause faith to birth hope in our hearts when things get hard. Surely, God has been faithful to us in the past, and we must think back to those times when he came through and use that to bolster our strength. In other words, we must remember that God has not taken you through all that you have been through to leave you high and dry now. Think of Peter walking on the water and how he was almost overcome by the water. He had taken his eyes off Jesus and was looking at the waves around him. Instead of getting better, the storm started to affect him. He started sinking even deeper into his circumstances. All it took for him to regain his footing was to return his focus to Jesus. Like Peter, when we go through the water, God will be with us. He will not allow them to overflow us. Think of the three Hebrew boys. They were thrown into a fiery furnace that was supposed to kill them. I'm sure you know the story. Instead of killing them, it became a testimony to those who were looking on. It's a marvelous thing when a believer enters the fire, but the fire does not enter into them. That's what happened to the three Hebrew boys. God didn't leave them, and he won't leave you. God didn't allow the fire to burn them, and he won't allow the fire to burn you. He is a faithful God. We can also trust the fact that God is also our provider. He will not allow us to go under. We can trust him to keep on providing even when things get difficult financially. Philippians 4.19 assures us, And my God will meet your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He is still willing to meet all our needs. We just need to trust his time and keep our gaze on him. When we lack, we do not need to worry about it. I encourage you and I encourage myself, keep your eyes on God. The Beatitudes provide a very good view of God's attitude towards the broken and the persecuted. They call us blessed when we find ourselves in rough situations. The poor in spirit are called blessed. The mourners are called blessed. The persecuted are called blessed. Are you among any of these? God, our faithful God, calls you blessed. God is our comfort. God will not leave you comfortless. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. This is a promise from John 14 that we can trust. When our hearts are failing us, we must be willing to believe that the Holy Spirit is there with us as the comforter. 
This is what Isaiah 43 2 is all about. There are situations where God won't send an angel. God won't send a care package or a substitute. He says he will be there. And then here you are in whatever struggle or trial you are going through. Yet God is with you. And if the truth be told, some of you listening to me are going through the water like Peter and going through the furnace like the Hebrew boys. And I just want to encourage you today. God is walking with every step of the way through the good times and the bad times, through the sunshine and the rain, through the trials and storms, through the hardship and battles, through uncertain times. Whatever fires or waters you may face, you are not alone.